There's not a lot known about uh, sodium glucose transport in bariatric surgery. Uh, there's been some excellent papers from France the last five years uh, from Francois Patou and Maud Legault, and they focus on sodium glucose transport one in the gut. And it's bariatric surgery, so it's a gastrointestinal surgery. It makes sense that people are actually in the gut. Uh, but uh, it seems that SGLT1 is uh, helping with glucose absorption. So after surgery, uh, either bypass or sleeve, you get reduced glucose absorption, either because you're inhibiting SGLT1 or because you're actually trapping it in the gut and it's flushed out. Uh, my study is focusing on SGLT2 in the kidney, which is weird because we're taking it out of the surgical field, uh, but that's what makes it a little bit more unique and there's nothing on this right now. It started as an observation from patients that take SGLT2 inhibitors and patients that have been, uh, had bariatric surgery. And uh, both these uh, groups of patients had a lot of similar characteristics. They had, uh, of course, reduction of uh, their diabetes, they had improvement of insulin sensitivity, but they also had improvement of cardiovascular outcomes uh, and they had increase in glucagon. Um, which was uh, quite unique in these two treatments. And we thought that maybe there's something there. So three years ago, I did gastric bypass in uh, lean rats. And then I checked the kidneys and SGLT2 had gone down. And I followed up this year by doing a different surgery, sleeve gastrectomy in mice. Uh, and I found exactly the same thing. So we thought we should uh, start looking into this. And of note, it's uh, both these groups, when compared to sham controls, had absolutely no weight loss. Uh, so it was a completely weight-independent mechanism. So most of us are here to cure diabetes, and we are trying to find a permanent way to deal with it rather than just maintain it. Um, and it seems that uh, bariatric surgery is the best way forward. So yesterday we heard from Professor Cummings that 70% of the patients undergoing bariatric surgery uh, actually have uh, diabetes remission uh, very fast and they're off drugs. And this could be a perfect way to um, deal with this problem. We can unravel the mystery and get bariatric surgery in a pill, uh, which is the main outcome of not having every single patient undergoing surgery. Uh, and this uh, study is actually investigating a brand new mechanism on how this could happen. So the study is obviously done in rodents, and lean rodents too. So they're not obese and they're not diabetic. Um, and ideally we need to focus on uh, a disease model. So we need rodents that are hyperglycemic. And of course the permanent outcome would be to translate this in the clinical setting. So actually have a clinical trial that involves patients that have diabetes and are about to undergo bariatric surgery and get some biopsies and urine samples and they see if this actually translates. So that would be the follow-up then. Uh, what we're trying to do now is uh, get rodents that are hyperglycemic, uh, so a uh, diabetes model, and see if we can actually translate what we see in lean animals in um, diabetic animals, or the best we can do to diabetes. Um, and once we do this, we're hoping to get a genetically modified model uh, that can help us actually pin down the exact mechanism through which uh, SGLT2 inhibition is happening. Uh, and of course, we're uh, right now focusing on the clinical translation and we are working with a clinical trial team um, in London and they'll be providing us with urine samples from bariatric patients after a meal. And they'll be, with this, we'll be able to see if they actually have glycosuria because glycosuria is the main thing that is an SGLT2 inhibition outcome. Uh, so if we can see this, we might go forward with a clinical trial that involves kidney biopsies that are a bit more tricky.